Story 1 Hailed to be one of the most dangerous animals in the world, there is no doubt that lions deserve their title as the king of the jungle due to their strength, aggressiveness, and ability to quickly kill their prey. Although they are extremely dangerous creatures, they are not a huge problem for humans since they live in places with little to no human population. However, lion attacks are still being recorded since there were communities and establishments near lion habitats. These five stories will tell the most bone-chilling ones ever. Imani was a 32-year-old South African woman who had been a tour guide in Kruger National Park for over a decade. She would always love wildlife, and showing visitors the beauty and power of the animals in their natural habitat was her passion. But one day, that passion almost cost her everything. On a scorching summer day, Imani led a group of tourists on a thrilling safari in the park. After driving for a few hours, they had already witnessed spectacular sights, including a herd of elephants grazing by the river, a family of cheetahs chasing a group of gazelles, and a rare sighting of a leopard lounging on a tree branch. The tourists were thrilled, and Imani was feeling good about the day. But then, as they were driving down a dirt road, Imani suddenly heard a loud bang. She looked back to see what had happened and saw that the door on the side of the vehicle had swung open. She quickly hit the brakes and tried to steer the vehicle to a stop, but it was too late. Imani fell out of the open door and landed on the ground, hitting her head hard on a rock. Imani was disoriented and in pain, but she knew she had to get back up and get back in the vehicle. She looked up and saw the tourists staring at her in shock, their faces frozen in fear. But as she tried to stand up, she saw movement out of the corner of her eye. She turned to look and saw a group of lions running toward her. Imani knew that she was in serious trouble. She had been on countless safaris before and knew that lions were one of the most dangerous animals in the park. She tried to scramble back to the vehicle, but her head was spinning and her legs wouldn't work properly. The lions were getting closer and closer, their snarling faces and sharp teeth sending shivers down Imani's spine. Suddenly, Imani felt a sharp pain in her leg. One of the lions had sunk its teeth into her flesh, pulling her away from the vehicle. She screamed in terror and pain, but her voice was drowned out by the sound of the lion's roars. The other tourists were shouting and honking the horn, trying to scare the lions away, but it was no use. Imani felt another bite, this time on her arm. She knew she would die and closed her eyes, waiting for the end to come. But then something miraculous happened. The lions suddenly stopped attacking her and turned their attention to the vehicle. Imani opened her eyes and saw that the tourists had managed to drive the vehicle away, leaving her alone with the lions. Imani lay there, bleeding and in shock for what seemed like hours. She didn't dare move for fear that the lions would return and finish her. But eventually she heard the sound of a helicopter in the distance. The park rangers had been alerted to the attack by the tourists. The rangers rushed to Imani's side and quickly loaded her onto a stretcher. They flew her to the nearest hospital, where she underwent emergency surgery to repair her leg and arm damage. The doctor said she was lucky to be alive and that she would have been killed if the attack had lasted just a few minutes longer. Imani spent weeks in the hospital recovering from her injuries. She was traumatized by the attack and couldn't bear to think about going back to work as a tour guide. But eventually, with the help of therapy and support from her family and friends, she overcame her fear and returned to the park. Story 2 Naomi had always been fascinated by the wild and the creatures that roamed it. As an Australian reporter, she covered several stories about wildlife conservation efforts and the threats animals face in their natural habitats. So when she received an assignment to cover a new safari park that had just opened up in the outback, she was intrigued. The safari park boasted a variety of animals, including lions, tigers, and bears. Naomi was excited to get up close and personal with these magnificent beasts and document their behavior in captivity. She was accompanied by a small camera crew and a local guide well-versed in the park's history and wildlife. As Naomi and her team entered the lion enclosure, they were greeted by a majestic male lion who was basking in the sun. 
The lion seemed at ease, and Naomi got close to him for a better shot. But as she raised her camera, the lion suddenly sprang into action and lunged at her. Naomi tried to run, but the lion was too quick, he tackled her to the ground, and began mauling her with his powerful jaws and razor-sharp claws. Naomi screamed for help, but her team was too far away to intervene. She was trapped, and the lion had no intention of letting her go. She screamed for help from her team, but they were too frozen in their place and terrified to come and help her, leaving her helpless and alone to defend herself from the vicious animal. The lion began to paw her and bite her on her face, neck, shoulders, and arms, causing them to bleed profusely in no time. The camera crew and the guide went screaming for help, while Naomi was crying in pain and she could feel herself passing out from losing too much blood from her wounds. Just as Naomi was about to lose consciousness, she heard a voice calling out to the lion. The park's handler, a man named Theo, had raised the lion since he was a cub. Theo had an uncanny bond with the lion and could command him with just a few words. Theo rushed towards the lion, armed with a whip and a chair. He knew he had to act fast to save Naomi's life. As he approached the lion, he cracked the whip and raised the chair, creating a loud noise that startled the lion. The lion paused momentarily, giving Theo enough time to grab Naomi and pull her to safety. But the lion was not done yet. He turned his attention towards Theo and charged at him with full force. Theo stood his ground, holding the chair before him to fend off the lion's attacks. Theo and the lion engaged in a tense standoff, each trying to outmaneuver the other. But Theo had an advantage, his years of experience with the lion and understanding of its behavior. He was able to anticipate the lion's moves and counter them with his own. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the lion backed down. Theo had managed to subdue him and bring him back under control. Naomi was badly injured, but alive, thanks to Theo's heroic intervention. The incident made headlines nationwide, and Naomi's story became a cautionary tale about the dangers of working with wild animals. The safari park was temporarily closed while an investigation was conducted, and the lion was placed under closer supervision. But for Naomi, the experience had a deeper impact. She had always respected the power of nature, but now she understood it on a whole new level. She had been given a second chance at life and was determined to use it to raise awareness about the importance of wildlife conservation and the need to protect these magnificent creatures from harm. As for Theo, he remained humble and modest about his role in the rescue. For him, it was just another day on the job a job that he loved and respected deeply. He knew that the lion was not to blame for the attack and that keeping the animal and visitors safe was his responsibility. Naomi and Theo continued to keep in touch after the incident, and Naomi even invited Theo to speak at a wildlife conservation conference she was organizing. Together, they hoped to better understand the delicate balance between humans and animals and how important it is to stay alert and not be complacent towards wild animals, even if they were raised in human care. Story 3 Quinn had been saving for years to take her son Enzo on a once-in-a-lifetime trip to South Africa. She had always been drawn to the continent's stunning landscapes and rich cultural history. But most of all, she wanted to show Enzo the incredible wildlife that South Africa had to offer. When they arrived, Gwen and Enzo were awed by the vast array of animals they saw, from elephants and giraffes to zebras and lions. But at the petting zoo on the outskirts of Cape Town, their dream vacation turned into a nightmare. Enzo was always the adventurous type, and when he saw the sign for the lion petting exhibit, he begged his mother to let him go inside. Quinn was initially hesitant, knowing that lions were dangerous predators. Still, the zookeeper assured her that the lions were tame, and there had never been an incident in the petting zoo's history. Enzo eagerly entered the exhibit and approached a majestic lion lying lazily in the sun with the help of the zookeeper in charge. He stroked its mane and laughed as it licked his hand. Quinn watched nervously from outside, but as time passed, she began to relax thinking that perhaps the zookeeper was right. That's when things took a terrible turn. 
Suddenly, the lion snapped, lunging at Enzo with ferocious speed. Quinn watched in horror as the lion pinned Enzo to the ground, clawing and biting him savagely. Enzo began to scream in terror as the huge lion was on top of him, pawing his small body and trying to bite his head, face, neck, and arms off his body. Enzo could feel the excruciating pain just from the lion's weight placed on his body and added by the bites the lion had given him while he was being mauled. He repeatedly called his mother's name for help, but Quinn was frozen in her place as she cried and screamed for someone to help her son. The zookeeper in charge who was on the site called for another zookeeper who knew how to tame the lion as Enzo was still getting shaken and thrashed around by the ferocious animal. At that moment, Quinn felt her world fall apart. She was frozen, unable to move or scream, but out of the chaos, a hero emerged. The zookeeper, Omari, had been watching the exhibit closely, and as soon as he saw the lion attack Enzo, he rushed inside. Using his years of experience, he was able to distract the lion and get it to release Enzo, who was badly injured and bleeding profusely. Omari quickly called for an ambulance and worked tirelessly to stop the bleeding and keep Enzo alive until help arrived. Quinn watched in awe as this man, who had just saved her son's life, worked with a calm and steady hand, never once showing fear or panic. The ambulance arrived and rushed Enzo to the hospital, where he underwent multiple surgeries to repair the damage from the lion's attack. But despite the trauma and pain, Enzo never lost his spirit. He remained brave and optimistic, determined to recover and continue exploring the wonders of South Africa. Quinn stayed by her son's side, grateful for his resilience and Omari's heroism. She couldn't help but feel guilty for allowing Enzo to enter the exhibit in the first place, but Omari reassured her that she was not to blame. As Enzo's wounds began to heal and he regained his strength, Omari visited him in the hospital every day, bringing him gifts and telling him stories about the animals he loved. Quinn watched as the bond between Omari and Enzo grew stronger with each passing day, and she knew they had formed a lifelong friendship. Finally, the day arrived when Enzo was strong enough to leave the hospital. Omari was there to say goodbye, and Quinn thanked him from the bottom of her heart for his bravery and kindness. As they left South Africa and returned home, Quinn and Enzo carried the memories of their incredible adventure, both the good and the bad. But most of all, they carried with them the knowledge that there are heroes in this world. People like Omari, who will risk everything to save the lives of others. And that, to Quinn and Enzo, was the greatest lesson of all. Story 4 Anel and Unathi were two experienced guides working in a wildlife reserve in South Africa. They had been guiding tourists through the reserve for years and had seen their fair share of wild animals in action. But nothing could have prepared them for what happened one fateful day. It was a hot summer day, and Anel and Unathi were out on a routine safari tour with a group of eager tourists. The drive had been going smoothly, with sightings of elephants, zebras, and giraffes providing ample entertainment for the guests. However, disaster struck as they were driving through a particularly dense thicket of bushes. A loud thud was heard from the back of the safari jeep, and the vehicle suddenly came to a jarring halt. Anel and Unathi quickly assessed the situation and discovered that one of the tires had blown out. They knew they had to fix it quickly to avoid putting their guests in danger. They had just stopped to fix the broken tire on their jeep when they suddenly heard a rustling in the bushes nearby. They immediately knew it was a lion, but didn't panic. They had been in similar situations before, and knew how to handle themselves. Anel and Unathi quickly instruct the tourists to remain calm and stay inside the jeep while they checked on the lion. They cautiously approached the bushes, armed with only rifles and a few flares. As they got closer, they saw the lion staring at them, ready to pounce. The lion lunged towards them in a split second, catching Anel off guard. He tried to shoot the lion with his rifle, but it was too late. The lion had already sunk its teeth into Anel's leg and dragged him away. Unathi quickly reacted and tried to shoot the lion, but his rifle jammed. He knew he had to act fast. 
Unathi immediately reached for his emergency flare and aimed it straight at the lion's face. The flare struck the lion's face, momentarily blinding it and allowing Unathi to pull Anel away. The two guides managed to crawl back to the jeep, but the lion was still on the attack. As the lion circled around the jeep, the tourists inside panicked. Anel and Unathi tried to calm them down, but it was difficult, with the lion still lurking around. They knew they had to get out of there fast, but the broken tire on their jeep was preventing them from moving. Thinking on their feet, Yunel and Unathi quickly came up with a plan. They instructed the tourists to start banging on the side of the jeep to create noise and distract the lion. Meanwhile, Anel and Unathi got to work on fixing the tire as quickly as possible. The lion continued to circle around the jeep, growling and snarling, but the noise from the tourists kept it at bay. Anel and Unathi worked fast, using all their experience to make the repairs quickly. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the tire was fixed. Anel and Unathi jumped back into the jeep and quickly drove away, leaving the lion behind. Once they were safe, Anel and Unathi checked on each other's injuries. Anel had deep bite marks on his leg, and Unathi had a few scratches on his arms. Despite their injuries, they knew they had survived a close encounter with one of Africa's most dangerous animals. After the ordeal, Anel and Unathi received medical attention and were taken off safari duty for a few weeks to recover. But they both knew they would be back out there in no time, doing what they loved most. Their bravery and quick thinking saved their lives and the lives of their tourists. It was a harrowing experience, but it only made them stronger and more determined to protect the animals they love so much. They would continue guiding tourists through the reserve, always vigilant and ready for whatever the wild had in store for them. Story 5 Alice woke up early, as she always did, put on her school uniform, and picked up her bag. She had a big smile excited to start another day of learning. As she walked towards the gate of her house, she felt the warm sun on her face and the fresh air filling her lungs. It was a beautiful morning in Zambia, and Alice felt blessed to be alive. She walked down the dirt road towards her school, passing by fields where the farmers were already working. She greeted them with a wave and a smile, and they waved back, happy to see the young girl on her way to school. Alice loved her community and felt safe walking alone to school every day. As she approached the school, Alice heard something moving in the bushes. She stopped and listened, trying to figure out what it was. Suddenly, a huge lion jumped out of the bushes and attacked her. Alice screamed, but the lion was too strong and it dragged her into the bushes. Alice was in shock and she couldn't move or scream. She felt the lion's teeth and claws tearing into her skin and she knew she would die. But then something amazing happened. Her brother Boyd, who had been walking behind her, saw what was happening and ran towards the lion, yelling and waving his arms. The lion turned to face Boyd, and Alice saw her chance to escape. She crawled away as fast as she could, her body aching and bleeding. Boyd and the lion were now fighting, and Alice could hear the growls and roars echoing through the bushes. She knew she had to get help, and she started crawling toward the school. Alice's classmates were already in the schoolyard, waiting for the bell to ring. They heard Alice's screams and ran toward the bushes. They found her crawling towards them, covered in blood, and they immediately called for help. The local authorities and medical personnel rushed to the scene, and they found Boyd and the lion still fighting. The lion had wounded Boyd, but he managed to drive it away with a stick. Boyd was taken to the hospital and received treatment for his injuries. Alice was also taken to the hospital where she underwent wound surgery. She had severe injuries to her arms, legs, and torso, and it was a miracle that she had survived the attack. The doctors worked tirelessly to save her life, and after several weeks of treatment, she was finally able to go home. Alice was grateful to be alive, but also traumatized by the attack. She couldn't sleep at night and had nightmares about the lion. She was afraid to go outside and didn't want to return to school. But then something wonderful happened. Boyd comforted Alice, explaining how the lion symbolizes strength and courage. He reminded her that she was strong and brave, just like the lion that had attacked her. Boyd promised to always support her 
and urged her never to hesitate to ask for help. The incident brought the community closer together, and they worked together to ensure everyone was safe. They set up a system to patrol the roads and fields to make sure that no one would be attacked by a lion again.